What's going on everyone? Chris back with another video. Today we're checking out Android Q. Today Google released the first beta preview or developer preview, whatever you want to call it, for all three generations of Pixels. So today we have the Pixel 2 XL over here on the left, which is running Android Q, and then we have my 3 XL over here, which is still running the latest Android Pie update. So a lot of changes more under the hood than anything else, but we can go ahead and kind of go over some of the visual changes and kind of really what's different um, first and foremost right off the bat. Um, so right now, uh, there is currently no uh, dark night mode or anything like that on Android Q. You can enable a full system wide dark mode via ADB. I'll leave the link to that on how to do that um, in the description. Thank you to XDA for providing that. If we jump over into Wi-Fi, we now have the ability to actually um, add Wi-Fi network by scanning in um, a QR code, or you can also share a Wi-Fi network via a QR code, for example. So you can do that. Um, so if you have another device that has a QR scanner, you can scan QR code, things like that. So easy Wi-Fi sharing. Now, if we take a look actually in our Wi-Fi real quick, we can see here some, some additional settings. One is this privacy. You can actually, Android Q will actually uh, randomize your MAC address for more privacy and security, whereas Android Pi, you can't do that. Um, I think you had to actually be rooted in order to randomize your MAC address, or you could use a static MAC address, which is from the device. This helps your privacy in terms of just everything um, so that way your MAC address isn't revealed if you're on a Wi-Fi network or anything like that. Fortunately, there is now um, no Android Beam, so there's no more capability to wirelessly or Bluetooth share objects or files um, to another device via Android Beam, which is basically tapping two devices to each other, so that's not there. So we go to display at the moment, like I mentioned already, um, there is no way for device theme for dark light or anything like that, um, but that's probably going to be fixed more than likely in a future update, so no worries there. Now we currently have a new, um, new tab called Privacy. So in Android Q, they've changed things up on how um, privacy and permissions are handled. Before, and if we take a look at security, so before we had uh, app permissions right here, basically in a, a list, for example, if we look at um, calendar, they had toggles of apps that can be used that uh, permission at any given time, all the time. Now in Android Q, how it works, they have a lot more granular controls over that. Um, so first it shows a, a list of different permissions. So same as before, right? Um, and then now it shows which apps have access to that permission and which ones don't, just in a long list. So it's easier to know exactly which ones have it and which ones don't versus having to scroll and look at all these toggles. So for example, if we want to give permission to location for the calendar, so that way it knows um, when where location for an event is, allow all the time only while the app is in use or deny. So a lot uh, more granular uh, controls um, versus let's say the calendar having access to location all the time. So this definitely gives a more sense of privacy. So that way you don't have to worry about an app that's in the background having access to your location. For example, it can only have access to your location when the app is actually open and you're using it. So that is definitely nice to have now. Now, we also have right here, autofill service from Google. This will actually show managing in terms of passwords, addresses, um, everything like that. It's easy to find and for you to be able to take control of and let's say copy a password real quick if you need to for a certain app or website, that sort of thing. If you go into system, developer options, we now have what looks like a hint of what future themes could be a possibility in terms of right now we have an accent color. We can change it from black. It's gonna change all the accent colors to black as we can see in the quick toggles. And right here, for example, we can change it to purple if you so want to. And then yeah, there's a different 
font as well. Um, I don't like it, as you can see there. There's that other font, or the de device default. Next is what's different is when you press and hold the power button, we have this emergency mode, which will give you access to a dialer, um, basically emergency dialer there. And you can just quickly call 911, emergency information if you're in an accident, um, then quickly information about you, such as blood type, allergies, that sort of thing. You can have all that information there. Um, so that wasn't easily accessible um, prior to now. Um, look at the lock screen, there is a slight difference also here. Um, this little lock icon at the bottom is present when the device is locked. And then when you go to actually swipe up, our, our keypad is different. We now have the backspace um, to delete down here. And then our go or check mark is now different. It's actually outlined in blue there. When taking a screenshot, now what happens is the screenshot actually includes any sort of rounded corners and or notches. So that way now when you share a screenshot, for example, it'll actually show um, the notch that your device has and any sort of rounded corners, things like that. So if I took a screenshot with Pixel 3 XL, it would show this nice huge notch up there. So yeah, that's different, that's new. Um, next is the sharing capability in terms of Android Q. So the sharing menu is much faster, much easier to access. It loads like that. And if we go to share right here, it gives you already the list of different apps that you can select from and actually a quick, easy way to copy um, a link, for example. So the sharing menu um, has been improved. It's definitely been something on Android that has been needed as well. Gestures are all the same. We still have our swipe up and then left and right to go through. Um, you still have your quick access of swiping the pill down here at the bottom as well. And then another quick little thing is actually, I don't know if it's a bug or not, but if you have, let's say, open an app like this, you can actually swipe up and then kind of drag your finger to the right to quickly switch. Um, I don't know if that's a bug or, or what, but that's, that's that. I mean, it's no different than quickly swiping the pill over to the right to alt tab sort of thing. The notification shade or quick settings toggle section now also has um, a slight visual difference. Um, here on Android Q, we the battery now shows you kind of an estimated time when the battery will actually die. Um, for example, it shows 12.45 p.m. tomorrow. Um, that is present over here. And they actually put the time and all the little icons all in one row here where the quick toggles are. Um, whereas this is broken up into like the status bar and then the quick toggle setting section there. Um, so that's different. Also on Android Q, you can no longer swipe left to clear notifications. You can only swipe notifications away to the right. Um, and if we swipe left, we get these two little settings here. You can basically hide all notifications, block, stay silent, or alert me. So those are new um, versus in, in Pi and previous versions. So that's uh, pretty cool. Gives you some more settings that you can select from. And if we go into the app menu, we have the ability to open, uninstall, and force stop. This visually is different than, than before. For example, if we take a look here, we can see just the visual appearance change, as well as having this open option over here on the left. We can see as well, instead of notifications being turned on, and then going into notification section, we can now actually see that this app has received one notification over a period of time. So one per week, for example, and you can actually then go into the settings and it shows you miscellaneous, there's one notification per week under miscellaneous. So it gives you a lot more granular uh, information for different categories within the, the app that uses and how often you receive notifications of that kind as well. A lot of things under the hood are improved. Um, there's now support for like depth sensing for cameras, so you're gonna have better and improved photography um, once developers, manufacturers 
bring that support out. Um, there's an option for like a low latency mode for Wi-Fi. So when you're gaming on your phone on mobile, um, on your Wi-Fi network, you can have like a low latency turbo mode type thing enabled. So that way it optimizes your Wi-Fi instead of for speed, but for low latency instead. Um, new APIs for developers to, to check out and implement as well. So that's gonna be all there. There's gonna be at least five more beta builds of Android Q before the final version of Android Q releases in Q3 of this year. So that's exciting. So the next difference here we have is the actual file app or the file manager um, has been updated now to a more material theme design. So if we take a look at wallpapers and we go to living universe, everything is kind of more rounded now and more kind of like polished and consistent. And if we look here, we can take a look at browse other photos. So if we look here on Android Pi, in Android Pi we have this whole kind of file explorer manager layout sort of thing. Here we have access to Google Photos and then some other apps you want to access files from. So it, that's different in terms of visual um, appearance for a wallpaper to select a, a photo from your device. Now that we have actually dark mode enabled here, um, which is system-wide like I mentioned, and you do that via ADB, um, there are definitely bugs in terms of where the, the dark mode doesn't work. Um, for example, in Google Photos, we can see down here it's still white, and then this kind of like uh, notification status bar is white. Um, so there's not gonna be 100% perfect. Um, it does make the Google Now feed black, uh, but yeah, so system-wide dark theme, you can enable it via ADB settings, or you can actually turn it on with a battery saver. Um, so that's just, if you wanna quickly take a look at it um, without having to use ADB, you can do that that way as well. So along with Andrew Q, they've added support for folding displays. Um, so now that the, the Galaxy Fold and the Huawei uh, Mate X um, have been announced, um, so there needs to be support for folding displays. So when they are in like this portrait mode and then you fold it out, the app resizes and adapts accordingly. Um, so if we look at settings right here, uh, they've also actually separated the location and security. So before it was security and location all in one. Now they have location separate and you can quickly access the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning um, quickly from the location section there as well. You can see easily which apps have access to your permission for your location also. Um, and then Security, we have these settings just like before, nothing really uh, different there. We are at least on the March security patch, so it's not February or anything older either. So yeah, so, so far um, everything has been um, pretty smooth. I mean, it's definitely a first preview. It's not 100% perfect. So overall, this is the first preview of Android Q um, for Pixels. I'll leave the link where you can actually download the factory images if you want to do that, or you can just register your Pixel device for an OTA beta update, and then we'll come through over the air, you install it. Thank you all for watching. If you guys have questions on Android Q, um, let me know down in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you all out and answer any questions you might have. Are you going to run Android Q on your Pixel? Let me know down below too. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.